they get your property, your compliance, and domesticate you. And if you hold on and don't pay the fines and fees and taxes that are designed to bankrupt you, they're going to send paramilitary to kill you. But first, they have to demonize you so the paramilitary feel good about their mission. And then as soon as that paramilitary has done their job, they get put on the you-know-what list. Because they're not going to ever pay that paramilitary their pension funds. You're not going to get your military pension funds. It's all being set up. It's all being prepared. It's already happening in Europe. It's all being announced. They will first cut them by 30%, 40%. Then they'll cut them another 34%. And you'll go along with it until it's nothing. And then you won't be able to live. You're going to be angry and disgruntled, and they know that. Rome had riots with their military not getting their pensions over and over again, the Roman Empire. The Babylonian Empire had problems. The British Empire had problems. The U.S. military after World War I didn't pay the bonuses they promised to the disabled vets. So they camped out outside the White House, and so they pulled up with army tanks and soldiers and, and horses and killed them. So, so they've always had to throw you in the garbage can. Because they know veterans tend to come back and actually try to build a better country after a war. After World War II, who led the Civil Rights Movement? U.S. veterans, military veterans. Look it up. They were the main group pushing for civil rights. Because they're like, we just beat Hitler, but we're going to do some of the same stuff here? See, they know you've got to be taken out and targeted. You've got to at least be put on a bunch of drugs, given PTSD designations, and thrown out like trash. So we're going to be covering that today. That's our top story, and Bundy's coming on because it's bigger than Bundy. And notice the FBI, Harry Reid, they're all saying congressional hearings that, that they're not going to let this stand, that they've got to arrest everybody. They've got to come after Bundy because they can't let you get the idea that you could ever stand up against them. We need to make an a, a, a InfoWars image to tweet out that says Harry Reid declares, uh, you know, Nevadans terrorist, the new terrorist, and show those images, those still images off our high-def video of the Cowboys. And that image of them with the American flag, and they're saying these are domestic terrorists, literally. They're going to have a tough sell with a bunch of uh, people on, 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 on horseback most of them unarmed, not pointing their guns at the feds, with the feds pointing their guns at them saying, we're going to shoot you if you come across that line. This is so historic. Now, also coming up, we're going to get into something that really illustrates the power of the real media. Two years before Drudge broke the missile secrets, the Monica Lewinsky, all the stuff that basically scuttled Clinton, so a lot of his agenda couldn't go through, thank God. Uh, Clinton administration feared Internet's ability to democratize news three years before Drudge bombshell. And they said, we dominate the media with their fake liberal garbage, every channel, print, radio, TV, fairness doctrine, banned any conservative talk or libertarian talk. So they feared the Internet and said, it will be a channel for these people. Because it's not really conservative. All thought that isn't basically Soviet. Because the bankers use a Soviet management model. That's what it is. The, the bankers in 1917 developed the plan out of British population control programs and British imperial management systems that they'd been using to deploy to the Bolsheviks to bring down uh, their ancestral enemy, their cousin, the Russians, the Tsars. The British, the British royalty ran Germany. But it was basically itself German royalty. And so they just brought down their own family there. Uh, that's classic. Royalty's always killing its own people. Here's the World Net Daily exclusive released Clinton files on media enemies. Learn what Hillary meant by vast right wing conspiracy. When Bundy leaves us at the bottom of the next hour, remind me, guys, I really want to spend 10 minutes on this. This is really important. Make me cover that because I'll get ahead of myself, run out of time, and not do it. 1230 Central or wherever your station re airs us. Uh, at the midway point of the transmission, 12.30, or an hour and a half from now, or an hour and 10 minutes from now now, I will be covering that. We've got that. Um, we've got new Obamacare news. Uh, we've got news dealing with uh, very important information with Justice Scalia saying, hey, TSA, groping you, NSA, whatever, that's all okay. That's going to be coming up as well. 
We'll tell you some of the news up on InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. It is all coming up straight ahead. And obviously, we've got a report, Ebola suspected in Europe, broken through all containment efforts. That's being reported by Reuters. Though officials at the World Health Organization are feverishly working to stop the spread of the Ebola virus in what is now seven African nations. That's an unprecedented outbreak. Their efforts may be for naught in Geneva or in Guyana. That's in Africa. I was thinking of Europe from the Geneva Convention in Geneva, Switzerland. In uh, Guyana, a hot spot for the deadly contagion. Government health officials have said the outbreak is nearly under control. Yet Reuters reports that the government planned to stop publicly releasing the death toll to avoid causing unnecessary panic is the quote. Despite the best efforts of emergency health workers, it appears the virus may have crossed out of Africa into Europe. The outbreak of the Ebola virus in seven West African countries has broken through all efforts to contain it and is spreading like wildfire, according to Christian relief groups working in Guyana, Liberia, and a number of other confirmed infections have jumped 15% in just the last 24 hours. So we'll continue to watch all of that. And if you go up to Infowars.com, you can... Read those out of the French news and uh, other publications. And we have links to Reuters uh, and others in the story. Uh, so sounds pretty bad. If, if, if Ebola ever becomes airborne, uh, look out, ladies and gentlemen, obviously. So that's some of the news on that front. Another Zero Hedge article. This means war. U.S. to target Putin's personal $40 billion stash. While the White House has continually threatened further sanctions against Russia for non-de-escalation, even as it uh, de-escalates itself, the specifics of the additional sanctions have been sparse. German uh, CEO warnings over blowback from economic sanctions and the nonsense of replacing Russian gas with U.S. gas, the Russian warnings of interdependence and boomerangs, all reduce the West's arsenal of financial sanctions. But as the Times of London reports, perhaps the U.S. has found a crucial pain point for Putin, a sanctions the regime that would target Putin's personal wealth, which includes a reported $40 billion stash in Swiss bank accounts. The Hill reports the White House on Friday refused to comment on reports that Russian President Vladimir Putin's personal wealth could be targeted if the West were to move ahead with additional sanctions over Ukraine. But the Times of London says the U.S. was preparing for a sanctions on the regime that would target Putin's personal wealth, which includes a reported $40 billion. That may be propaganda itself. I mean, I'm sure he's got money stashed, but $40 billion? And do the globalists want to start the dangerous game of targeting other despots' money? How big do you think Bill Clinton's Swiss bank accounts are? How big do you think Barack Obama's Swiss bank accounts are? Well, the answer is they just hide all that in plain view. Congress gets caught insider trading five years ago. Their answer is just say it's legal. People go, but it's not legal. Okay, we'll pass a law to reform it, close quote, which actually legalizes insider trading for Congress. Well, I say that if you legalize murder for yourself, that law is a fraud. And it's certainly a fraud if other people can't murder, but only you are exempt. Well, I mean, I guess we could pass a law saying, uh, you know, that we live in a country of total and complete anarchy, but you can't kill somebody, only they can. Well, that's not anarchy. That's called a hypocritical fraud. Continuing here with the news, here's another one by Paul Joseph Watson up on Infowars.com. Very important article. They have thousands of mass riots a month in China. China in most areas resembles Soylent Green, the movie. Watson's been over there four times. He says it is unspeakably horrible in the major cities. And Chinese citizens beat government bureaucrats during mass riot. They beat them bloody. And, and warning, the video and photos are graphic up on Infowars.com. Irate Chinese citizens savagely beat five government bureaucrats during an incident that escalated into a thousand-strong riot Saturday in another telltale sign the communist country's increasing social tensions. The disturbance began after members of the Qinggong Municipal Province Police. China's widely loved bureaucrats who enforce government regulations against street vendors began harassing and beating a woman in the county of Winzung City. 
When a bystander, 36-year-old Mr. Hung, came to the woman's aid by filming the confrontation, he was reportedly attacked by cops with a hammer and began to vomit blood before dying at the hospital. The people responded. We're on the march. The Empire's on the run.